a slight rain delay. Uh, and just to, since we're going to hang out here until we get through this, we'll just see yeah. what's going on with us. I'm Kathleen Newman and I'm Julie Skoda and we love to plan our paint together. <laughs> so we've done a couple events over the years and anytime we can, we, we paint. That's right. Yep. And uh, I just moved to a new awesome location. So that's why we're here at the beach. Uh, our show is a lot about water. We painted together in uh, Ocean Reef, Key Largo. Look forward, things are looking good. Let's go paint more water. Yeah. So as we practice uh, being outdoors. Um, and Kathy's a sailor. So we painted the Chicago Harbor a few times. Right. And Chicago the, River. Chicago River. We've painted in Dubuque. So water is a theme in most of our our painting so today we hope to get a little bit of water it's calm we're getting it gray the way we don't want it's raining it. on us <laughs> light rain stopping in 20 minutes yeah so, so um, we'll yeah. show you a lot of our we're gonna go through this whole process and then we'll show you some of our, our water paintings at the end sounds good um real quick if you can see Julie can show you anything different we've got plenty of easels little boxes of pastels that clip on so they are stationary and uh, each of us carry a backpack without too much weight so we can walk and hike out here but um, well the paintings will be unveiled again once the rain stops but it's a nice lightweight setup with all these different colors to uh, interpret being out in nature which to me is um, the best way to study color because as we're out here and it's changing subtly this is a gorgeous day to paint actually because there's no bright sun the shadows aren't moving it's very relaxing uh, a little moody, a little hazy, and you look at the color of the sky and it looks like maybe it's whitish, but there's more color. The more you stand out here and look, the more color you see. So that's the benefit, I feel, of plein air painting, plus being outside. Yeah, it's outside and you, you, know, you can't wear sunglasses because that's going to skew the color. So we both have hats on to kind of block you know, the sunlight from us and um, any ambient light. And um, we both did starts that are a little different, and um, but we're both seeing color, and it, it's fun to do it together so we see color differently. Right, as it should be. Yep. Different personalities paint things with different expressions, so we'll get back to it. Okay. So after looking at the landscape, I take a small viewfinder and work out my composition. I'm using a pencil and I did identify the center. I want to stay out of there. Um, just looking for values and shapes as I get started. So after I've done my small value sketch, I use that as my guideline for drawing on the sanded paper. So I'm really just looking at my small sketch at this point and putting a contour drawing of what I see. I have a small sketch off to the side of the major shapes in my composition. And then I usually take a pastel pencil in any color that I feel like drawing in um, to record those shapes on my, um, in this case, it's a UART sanded pastel paper. So the first stage in actually painting with pastels is creating an underpainting. It's one of my favorite things to do. I apply color. Uh, it can be random color. It could be planned. Uh, in this case, I'm looking at the actual colors of the landscape in this mu more muted tones in this um, even light that we're painting in today. And I just take usually new pastels and just give a layer of pastel across the surface of the paper and then I will liquefy this with alcohol uh, which dries very quickly outdoors and this basically just tones the surface of the paper into some type of color that I can begin the painting um, in pastels to follow. In this painting outside today I'm using this alcohol. 
spray because it will dry quickly. Uh, usually I use odorless mineral spirits, sometimes watercolor, sometimes a light layer of oil. Um, there's many different things you can try in the underpainting, but the goal here is just to get the surface of the paper wet and blend all my colors softly together. Kathy showed us how she used pastel sticks and alcohol to get the pigment into the paper. I'm going to start my painting using a set of watercolor paints and an inexpensive brush. So instead of alcohol, it's water-based and uh, try not to use too much water so it doesn't buckle the paper, but um, liking how the uh, colors blend and drip into each other and just having fun and experimenting a little bit with colors that will be underneath as I layer pastel on top. After the watercolors dried, I'll start by applying uh, dry pastel sticks on top. And I am going back and looking at my small value study a little bit, and also I'm looking at the scene and trying to make sure I keep the values correct, but um, also experimenting with color a little bit. And with pastels, you always start, you want to think about what is underneath, what color you see underneath. So I'm looking to see what's what colors I see underneath that I'll gradually layer on top of. And to me, that's the most exciting and interesting part about pastels is being able to layer color and create new and unique combinations. Um, so the yellow that I put underneath the sky, a little bit of that will peek through as I layer it with these lavenders and light greens and light blues as I start to create the effect of uh, distance and um, atmosphere in the painting.
So now my alcohol underpainting is dried and I can go into uh, working with the color. Um, trying to think of what value I need. We've got some clouds overhead and I just grab um, something in the correct value towards blues. Um, but after underpainting, this is another really fun stage for me because the colors, uh, like you can't make a mistake. You just put, you just try a few colors and you can always modify. And that's the beauty of pastel is blending and mixing color right before your eyes. And what I think is really interesting as we're watching our uh, videos together is Julie started out with such bright colors and I'm working in a more muted palette. And it's just fun to see how we each respond to the same scene before us. So I feel like I've put in um, a variety of colors for the sky, mostly cools, blues, and uh, some lavender is looking nice. As I keep looking at the sky, I see warmth in the clouds, and um, it's just fun to layer all these colors together. As the painting continues, I start looking at the shapes of the landmass and the color of the lake, uh, and then the color of the dune grass to start um, Putting color everywhere is the way I like to feel about this stage so that I can respond to what is happening before my eyes. So uh, we're both kind of on pace for this demo, and so I'm about halfway through. Um, there's more to do, but what I saw here um, is this distance, and the, uh, there's the landmass. This is all dune grass. The distance back here that fades away into the horizon, which I think is really interesting. And then the sky is more than. It's about two thirds of my painting. So the painting is mostly about sky and then this distance landmass. Uh, the sky keeps changing. Uh, I said earlier, I love this uh, even light. Uh, it's to me very um, relaxing, except for the rain part. But um, anyway, the, as the clouds move, I'll start working more on this as I continue. But here, here's my really quick sketch where I've got the horizon about two thirds down and then sky and that's all I need to get going, especially plein air. We're not going to 
you know, I'll get done what I can get done, but I'm responding to the color I see and what I can do with it. Now, as I'm looking, it's actually getting a little more pinkish purple back here. So um, I'll continue with that. But basically I have color everywhere and I'll start to refine some of my shapes and, uh, you know, cover with a little more pastel. I still see the underpainting uh, color showing through, but basically um, this, I'm excited about being here and I'm, I actually am excited about this color of the sky and we'll just continue well, on. I'm about halfway through my painting as well and what I thought was kind of fun is, I, is Kathy's painting. She's doing this tall vertical and I decided to do a long horizontal format. Um, uh, my center of my painting is also right here and I'm working with the lower horizon line. And uh, I saw a lot of colors too, that there's a lot of greens and blues and purples and even a little pink in the sky and in the water. Um, I love that contrast and the lightness with the dune grasses and kind of this, uh, because it's still not spring, I mean, it's still early spring and we don't have the greens showing through yet. Um, so there's a lot of these rusty purpley colors in our darks. Um, so. Uh, the light is changing a little bit. We did get a little wet, but not terribly wet. So the problem with pastels is you don't want to get too wet or you're going to get all these water spots. So they dry and we'll keep on painting. So I've got a nice start to this and I'm now on the probably one or two layers until I'm finished and I get really get everything covered nicely. I like a lot of the under painting to show through and some of these layers. So I'm not going to do a completely filled in painting. Also, I mean, we'll think of this more of a study for a future painting. It's only six by 12, so it's small, but, um, it's also big enough that I could finish it and make it a finished piece as well. Um, but right now I'm just testing color, lights against darks, um, working with the clouds, which are standing out too much now, so I'll gradually soften that. Uh, it's very tactile. You just want to, um, depending on how much pressure you use and, and how, how light a pressure, you can vary the textures, mark making, and create your own unique painting.
This is the next phase of painting. I've uh, done the underpainting. I've put color everywhere. And now I continue to respond to the painting um, in front of me and also the scene in front of me. Sometimes I might go off in a little bit different color direction than what I'm actually seeing because the color in the painting itself has intrigued me. So it's a give and take of what's real in front of me and possibly um, responding to the feeling I have from the color, colors that I'm actually looking at on the surface of my painting. I'm softening cloud shapes. I've got yellows to re reflect the warmth in the sky behind the clouds. And um, it's a layering process over and over, as Julie was saying, with um, pressure, uh, you can make darker and heavier marks. And with lighter pressure, it's almost like a glazing technique. And with skies, I want a, a soft uh, feeling overall that the clouds are up there in the atmosphere and uh, they're light and airy. Now on the ground, I'll use more pressure uh, for the land mass and the grasses that are coming forward. Um, and I show a few little reflections of some buildings in the distance, um, just to kind of set up a little more interest further in the uh, space of the painting.
So this really is the final stages. Um, I want to soften those that tree line in the background, so I am adding a little violet on top of those rust colors. I also want to break it up a little bit, and I'll add. Um, I want to soften some of those edges. So playing around with color just a little bit more, um, finding spots that I want to highlight and brighten, and I'll be done. And here are the final touches um, for the painting today. Um, you take what you get when you paint in plein air, and we have a little threat of rain, so we're kind of under the gun in our finishing time. And this is also plenty of time to get down what you need to see and what you need to record. Um, maybe we'll use it as a reference for a, a larger painting with a photograph, but... Um, I'm happy with the sense of clouds in the sky and the grasses and sometimes I'll just let it sit on my shelf in my studio and I might tweak and put a little more um, area of interest maybe where the buildings are at the edge of the water. We'll see. But uh, all in all, I feel very satisfied for a wonderful painting day. So thanks for joining us. We've uh, painted for an hour. We're both quick uh, painters and with plein air, that's really to our advantage. Um, these can be framed, we'll sell them. Um, everything we do is for sale. Um, or they can be used as a study for future larger pieces. Um, and uh, we're also both uh, involved with Chicago Pastel Painters and we're really lucky this year that the International Association of Pastel Painters are having their international exhibit in Chicago in, what is it, in June, I think. Yes. In June. So that's a great opportunity. Right. So uh, there's information for julieskoda.com, yep. kathleennewman.com. If you have any questions, contact us about anything, anything you've seen, any other questions. Uh, there's going to be a question and answer period also right after this segment. Um, but this show in Chicago is an international pastel show. And if you like what you've seen is how it's as far as how pastels are handled, it's uh, highly unusual to see an entire show dedicated to the pastels and to see them in person uh, framed under in a beautiful gallery situation is very unique. So if, I mean, I wouldn't miss it. It's a really unique opportunity that won't come again for a while. Uh, this exhibition um, sponsored by uh, International Association of Pastel Societies that's IX. coming to Chicago. <laughs> IF, the IF show. Yeah. Yes. And then um, the Chicago Pastel Painters is the group we're both members with that uh, host seminars and paint outs and as things start moving along again. So that's another um, source uh, for pastel artists to look forward to. We both teach. I teach in Old Town and I teach uh, privately at times and and I teach in LaGrange and I also uh, teach online and so does Kathy so you can uh, be anywhere and take classes from us yeah. Um, so yeah we enjoy painting we enjoy hanging out so thanks for this thanks opportunity for with us. we might not have been out here otherwise yep uh, so it was a great day it's beautiful so thank thanks. you